After five o'clock, we start yaja. We keep studying until 12 or one to two o'clock. Most of Korean students would have some mental issues like depression or sleep issue or panic disorder. In high school, we weren't supposed to think. Also like Suneng yeah. is all MCQs. Yeah, 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 that's right. I had my own thoughts. I was like, oh, doesn't this make sense? And she's like, no, but if you want to get a good grade, you have to think like this. Removing killer Christian situation cannot solve the fundamental problem of the Suneng. Some students and some parents will go more and more hard on to get solution of this removing killer Christian mm -hmm. situation. So. Hi everyone, this is Korea Uncharted. It's our podcast from the Korea Times. And in this podcast, we uh, invite various guests from different uh, backgrounds who have been living in Korea and to share about their experiences about living in Korea in different aspects. And today we have two special guests to talk about a very hot topic right now in Korea. So Korean education system is famous all over the world uh, for its very rigorous system and how much hours students spend in the school, right? But recently the government, they uh, announced a new policy that they will remove the killer questions from the Korean Suneng, the Korean SATs. And that became a whole big issue in Korea right now. And parents are all like, why are you doing that? Like then the exam will become much more easier and not give their kids the competitive edge that they would have if they went to Hagwons and like studied for those killer questions. So it has become, it has become a big issue in Korea right now. And we wanted to understand why this has become an issue. Because in my perspective, if the, if the exam becomes easier, it's good for everyone, right? Because then everyone can have less stress, enjoy the school life. But in Korea, it's the opposite. So we have brought you guys <laughs> to, to tell us about your Korean high school uh, education experience and let us understand and help us understand why people are reacting the way they are reacting. So, would you want to introduce yourself from you? Hello, my name is Yunmin Cho. I am 24 years old and I spent my young age, uh, when I was young, I spent seven years in the US and came back to Korea, went through an international middle school and in regular high school and rolled into Sogang University. How about you? Uh, hello, my name is Sumin Park and now uh, I think I'm 21 years old. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Internationally. Yeah, internationally, I think I'm 21 years old. And I graduated from Seoul Global High School. Now I'm in Hongkong University, teacher communication design in art field. Yeah. Okay, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> um, so before we get into like how Korean education system works and like how your day looks like and stuff like that, I think we should like let our uh, viewers know like what kind of how the Korean education system is structured and what kind of like high schools exist because like there are a lot of high schools in Korea. So could you explain like how the Korean education system works? Well, so basically there's like six years in elementary school and then after that you go to in middle school for three years and then three years for high school. But then um, the six years of elementary school and three years of middle school you have to go. All the students have to go. It's compulsory. Yeah, yeah it's compulsory. Mm -hmm. But then high school is for students, you can choose to go or not. But 99.7% of, of the Korean students go. So basically all of them go yeah. to high school. That's a very high yeah, number. Yeah, it's a really high rate. Yeah. So. And like what kind of high schools exist in Korea? Like there is kind of really various, various type of high school in Korea. Like for, for example, first, the normal one. like almost every student go to the normal high school and some of the special high school like for art or some business or some international things or some language foreign language and some science etc etc and there is some school for gifted children gifted student and some autonomy high school like it is some kind of private things or also for public things and yeah all of the high school is kind of various and they're all different but at Last at last year, they all studied for Suning, the Korean SAD, and then 
I think that every high school's purpose is to go into good universities. So mm. basically, fundamentally, same thing. So like most of the Korean students, they go through the same kind yeah. of process and same kind of environment in high school, no matter how different it is. Yeah. I see. And like, did you guys enjoy your high school era? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. I mean, other than studying, most of the yeah. activities and stuff were fun. But studying was yeah. so stressful. Like, it was really stressful time. Not only for us, maybe every student. Yeah, I would. If you were to calculate, like, how much percentage of your time did you spend studying in, like, one, the last year of high school? And how much percentage of the time did you spend, like, hanging out with your friends or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, doing your hobbies and stuff like that? I don't think most Korean high school students have hobbies. Really? <laughs> because. Yeah. If you go to high school, mm. most of the classes end at five o'clock, usually four to five. At school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're basically the whole day at school. Yeah, like day maybe day one day I get some hobby, but yeah. there is no any chance to thinking about hobby. Mm. Like if they're thinking about hobby or I wanna do something, then it means like you waste your time. Yeah. Every people say about it, so they don't wanna waste their time and they don't wanna ruin their whole life to not go to university. So mm. getting hobby is some kind of waste. To Korean students. Did you guys have something that like you wanted to do when you were a kid, like when you were in high school, but like you couldn't because you had to study? Well, for me, it was art. Like mm -hmm. I usually, basically, I really love to drawing, drawing things, not art, real art, art. So I love, I really love drawing. But when I was in elementary and middle school, mm -hmm. I get realized that oh, art cannot be money things. Like, you were very young when you realized. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I think like every student, the most of students will realize that like mm -hmm. our, our hobby cannot be money yeah. and our hobby cannot make some good university things mm -hmm. and it will ruin our life. Even if it is not raining, but mm -hmm. they thinking like it will ruin my life. I will fail. Mm -hmm. So I give it up my art and I went to global high school and studying for some international things and social media things. but. I feel like if I don't drawing, then I will gonna kill myself. So fucking, <laughs> I will give it up. So I just going to art Hagwan, even again Hagwan, and also studying in global high school for my two years, last year and two years. So, so you yeah. still like went back to drawing? Yeah, I go back to drawing. And you're following your passion, yeah. like what you like to do. What about you? Did you have something that you wanted to do? But I was kind of a student that had to do i had to do the things that i wanted to mm. so usually like i used my times that in, in between times mm, right. so for example i studied for like one or two hours and then i went to play ping pong or stuff mm. because there's a ping pong court in mm. our school so i play ping pong in between for like shortly like 20 minutes or 30 minutes so that but one of the things that I wanted to do was tennis but I'm playing tennis at, in, university. in university so so you need to wait until you get to university yeah if you to want to do what yeah, you yeah. want to do that's so sad though like when you're 16 you're 17 mm -hmm. like that's the age when you're supposed to have fun exactly. with your yeah. friends and like mm -hmm. uh, be active mm -hmm. physically active right. and you can't do that in high school that's kind of sad it is so like how would a daily schedule of a high school student in Korea would look like? Like, how was your daily schedule when you were in high school? Like in your last year of high school? Last year, mm -hmm. um, our class starts around eight and then we eat lunch around 12. And then there's a one hour lunch break. Mm -hmm. And then starting from one o'clock to four to five, uh, we have classes and then after four, oh, but usually when we're in the first year or second year of high school, we have club activities and stuff. But in the last year of high school, we don't have club activities. So it's just studying the whole time in classes also. And after five, four or five o'clock, we start yaja. It's night studying. It's starting night studying in school. So before that, we have another one hour to two hour dinner break. Mm. So we get to eat dinner in school or but that's not we get to choose whether to eat in school or not. So after that, we keep studying until 12 or one mm. to two o'clock. Mm. And is that like voluntary yaja, the night study or is it like obligatory for everyone? In our school, it was voluntary. Mm. So 
Um, usually, last year students, top grade students, have a study room for their own for about 20 students. So they have their own study room. Is it like a special room? Yeah, yeah. Like, what's, what's special about it? Like, how is it different from normal it's, people? It, they just have their own room. Yeah. That, that's just special. Because the, the other students, they have to use a big classroom together. But then for those students, you have their own study room. So that's the difference. But like, did you go to Yaja's every day? So you said it was volunteer. Yeah, yeah, I went to Yaja because I thought I, I had to have my friends who are studying the same thing. Mm. When they're around, I concentrate better. Mm. So I went to Yaja. How about you? Like, how uh, did your day look like? Because my high school was a um, global high school, and also we have the dormitory like in high school. And even we live really near to school, or we live in Seoul, because we're in Seoul global high school, all of our students should live in dormitory. Like it is necessary to live in dormitory. For just like last three years of, like three years, three years of high school? Three years, we have to live in dormitory. Don't you need to pay more to live in no, the dormitory? No, because some good point of our high school was we are public high school, oh. so get some things from government a lot so that is not that much expensive but the saddest thing is like it is forced to live in dormitory and also it is really hard to go outside without permission you like even i want to go some hospital or i want to go some hagwon or hagwon then i need to get some permission paper from the teacher and from the hospital and that kind of things so we cannot go outside that i just want to go outside to, oh no you can't because you're in dormitory, you're a high school student, go and study. So it so was our daily life. In the dormitory. Yeah, we can go outside at the weekend, like go home. Mm. Then we can go home in weekend, but some of students just choose to stay in dormitory because they need to study more and oh. dormitory and school classroom is better place for them to study. So So like your is it like the same kind of schedule that you guys also yeah. follow in the in your school? Because we are in dormitory, so mm. six AM and six thirty AM between the time we should wake up and get we should wake up at 6 and 6 30 a.m and then go to school at 8 a.m until 5 p.m so after 5 p.m uh, there is kind of time that we can do some club activities in first and second grade of high school also we have some a lot of club activities like korean traditional classic dancer and orchestra mok yu and the kind of things also to go university mm, being some it's, it's all for your resume yeah all for resume and after again we will having some night study in school yeah. which said you can choose it but everything is necessary yeah. like some forced night study yeah. till in our school like in global high school we are forced to study till 11 p.m <gasps> in school so go back to dormitory and then study more till 1 or 2 a.m <laughs> so you are more than, more than 12 hours you're yeah. at school you're almost like what 14 hours 15 hours yeah. Just, and you, you just, you just spend the whole day in school. Yeah. What do you do in weekends then? Study again. <laughs> <laughs> study. To so go hack one mm, thing. Get tutoring. Yeah. yeah. Usually private education. You mm. get private education in the weekends. Mm. And from Monday to Friday, you stay in school. Yeah. But mm. in Saturday, you also we can also go to school to study. So mm. it's so also schools are open. open. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So. Wait. So on on average, how how many hours did you guys sleep? Uh, on a regular high school day? I would say six. Six, six hours? Six hours? That's not a lot. Yeah, yeah it's not. How about you? Four hour high school oh, students? Four like, hours? Yeah. That's not really good for your health. <laughs> if some students, some students can, yeah, we can sleep yeah. till 11 p.m. and 6 p.m. We can, can mm -hmm. sleep, but do not sleep. But then you don't have any personal time yeah. for yourself. Like you're either in school or sleeping. Yeah, that's right. Did you did you feel like your health was not so good or like did you feel like did you get sk sick more often or like definitely yeah, yeah. yeah. also like because we are in dormitory and mm. it is really little community like we cannot go outside we are by ourselves so it's my opinion but I think it is some kind of certain things like most of Korean students would have some mental issues like mm. depression or sleep yeah. issue or panic disorder. And I saw really a lot of the kind of issues in high school, so that is not that is really abnormal. Mm, but like, does the school 
do something for them or they're just like no just you no, no, you suck no, it no. up for like three years and then you can solve your issues they will say just like if you go to university then everything will be solved yeah, mm. yeah that's that is- like the <laughs> most thing all the teachers talk yeah. about they all say Ev- everything's gonna be okay if you go to high if, if you go to college yeah. so study <laughs> so if that's like the common college, so. thing they say yeah. is it okay after going to university i don't think university no. is that different from high yeah. school mm. I, I would say the pressure is a bit small mm-hmm. than what I had in high school, but I don't see anything much different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And also for me, I get my depression from till high school, from high school, mm-hmm. and still that kind of pressure of depression, panic disorder things still get make me feel really bad. Mm-hmm. And also the social atmosphere they say like if you go to university, you can do everything, everything will be fine, blah blah blah. blah. Mm-hmm. That atmosphere make the most students who go to university make do not do anything like mm-hmm. they can study some of them study but they feel like now i'm in university and now i will live my life ruin my life and do something blah 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 so like i i know some of my friends um who were when they came to university and they're like first year students some of them they just didn't go to classes yeah. yeah like they failed classes because they didn't have the attendance and they were just out partying every day because they got this freedom yeah. out of nowhere and they didn't know how to use it <laughs> that's a really that's common true. thing in korea yeah. do you do that too like your first year of university uh, i <laughs> wasn't really the party type mm-hmm. so i didn't go out partying a lot but i I did play a lot mm-hmm. compared to I went out to have fun with my friends a lot, mm-hmm. but yeah, not partying. Mm-hmm. Right. I love partying, but like, because <laughs> my first and second year of university it was like COVID in situation. Mm-hmm. So oh, oh, you're the co- yeah. co- Corona. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> you're the COVID yeah. student. You lived in the U.S. for seven mm-hmm. years, right? Right. Do you feel it's very different, like the academic environment, the school environment in two countries? Uh, there's a big difference. Uh, I would say that there are a lot of extracurricular activities already in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So there are other stuff other than like math, English or Korean. That's like the main subjects that we learn. Mm-hmm. But other than those, there are a lot of subjects that we could learn mm-hmm. in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And mostly when when I was in the, in elementary school, most of the classes were like going out. I'm playing. Mm. I'm and there were a lot of outdoor classes too. Mm. Also, I went to an international middle school. Mm. So the environment was very different from the high school that I went to. Mm. But then in the international middle school, they had a lot of talking about their thoughts or doing presentations. There were a lot of analytical Yeah, 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 yeah. Critical Most thinking. of the activities were those were the basis, but in high school they were just forcing me to memorize stuff. Yeah. So my first two years in high school were actually more harder for me mm. than the last year because I had to like in- go through, a go- I had a time where I had to like to be get like used to, mm. get used to the first two years. Mm. Oh, it must be like a huge change. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was actually more harder for me in mm. the first two years. Yeah. Than the last year? Yeah, <clears throat> because I didn't, I didn't know how the, Korean education worked because after going to an elementary school in the US, I went to an international international middle school, which didn't have a Korean curriculum. It was way different from the Korean. Was it like the IB curriculum? Yeah, it was kind of similar to that. So most of the presentations and most of them were like debate classes. So we were supposed to talk about our thoughts and stuff, but in high school, we weren't supposed to think. Yeah. It was kind of like that. So, so like talking about that, like how do they educate mm-hmm. in Korean high schools? Like, is it just like rote memorization um, based, or like are there like do they like as you said they don't let you think? Mm-hmm. But like, is that like for all classes in high schools? Well, when I was in se- first and second grade in high school, <clears throat> in global high school, we just getting to, we have to write some essay and some thesis about it. So some kind of critical thinking we can do it. But in last year, mm-hmm. last year we really get dramatic change to be put ourselves oh, yeah. in Sunung curriculum. Mm-hmm. And I just heard that like in normal high school also that the three years, the whole curriculum is the first thing to get used to in Sunung. Mm-hmm. Like rather than thinking about what I want to do or what I want to be 
you should just thinking about going to good university, going to get good grade in Suning. And the whole curriculum just say that like, if you don't do it, then you will ruin your life. That is the one way ticket to go to your life. So mm, like there's no other paths yeah. that you can go to. There's just one path. Yeah. Go to a good university and have a good life. Yeah. yeah so like even like the all three years of high school is just preparation towards yeah. Sunang kind of thing. Like and also like Sunang has it doesn't have essay type questions, does it? Yeah. yeah. It's all MCQs. Yeah, 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 that's right. Like for me, that doesn't make any sense. Like how <laughs> like I've taken the Korean the topic, the Korean language exam in Korea. Mm -hmm. And there are like only three questions that are like essay based, that is like exact the writing part, but all the other parts is just all MCQs. And I was like, how do you judge someone's yeah. knowledge based on MCQs? Because there's always a 25% chance that they will get it right. But for me, the MCQ system doesn't didn't make sense at all. Mm -hmm. And especially when it's when it's deciding someone's future yeah. and someone's career. Like at least in India, we have a very similar education system and like it's very based on rote memorization and stuff like that. But still like the final uh, 12th grade exam, the Sunang that we have, it still has, most of them are essay questions, like are open questions, not essays, like short, short answers or long answers or like in math, you need to show everything, all the steps and like what you did. In English, you need to show like, what did the author think when he was writing this, this, this. Like you need to think stuff and you need to, you need to write your opinions about it. And you need to use critical thinking. So for me, at least like, even if the, the teaching methods were based on rote memorization, if you didn't understand the concept and if you didn't know how to express yourself, then you would still not get good grades. Oh. But like in Korea, they train you yeah, really <laughs> how to solve them. MCQ questions. Yeah. And for, those, for that kind of training, you go to like Hagwons, yeah. right? Yeah. Like that's what, is that like the main purpose of Hagwons in Korea? Yeah. So the, one of the main reasons that I didn't go to Hagwons, in, instead of ha going to Hagwons, I went to, I got personal tutoring. Mm -hmm. One of the main reasons for that was because I didn't want to get education like that. So I didn't want to get forced into memorizing. I got Korean tutoring because I wasn't really good at Korean. Mm. So something funny happened was I always fought with my tutor mm. because I had my own thoughts. Mm. I was like, oh, doesn't this make sense? And she's like, no, but if you want to get a good grade, you have to think like this. Mm. I get that you can think like that, but if you want to get a good, good grade, then you have to think like this. Mm. So that was like the most <laughs> hard part. Yeah, just to think how they want you to think. Yeah. Did you also go to like Hagwans? Well, for me, like, cause we were in dormitory and also we, our global high school curriculum is kind of much different from normal high school. Mm -hmm. Like we should study some AP, AP geography, AP mm -hmm. microeconomy, or some presentation, writing English essay. It is not some normal Hagwan things. That Hagwan thing is occasionally for some Sunung curriculum, so. But in last year, we were forced to study in Sunung and our curriculum changed. And also some students go to Hakwan at week weekend, like weekday they should study in dormitory and night study. And also I was in art things, the designing from second year of high school. So I went to art, art Hakwan, but that also art Hakwan is not just for drawing. Like we should preparing for the test, not mm. just do what I want and drawing. So getting standardized by the standard of uni, each uni, but also be special in that standard. So <laughs> kind of really wow. weird things. So like even art, you cannot express yourself. Yeah, we should not express ourselves. Oh. You should not express yeah. yourself. If I express myself and I want to do my drawing, then, then don't, don't go uni. We cannot go uni. The uni don't want the thinker, just they oh. want, what they want is be standardized, but also be special. Not just how thinking. Does, how is that? Well, that is really weird. Things, but <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure for a seventeen-year-old kid. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be special, but also be inside the yeah. box <laughs> that we have made for you. It's like, how does that make sense? But like, there were also uh, news recently that came out where they did like a survey, uh, and they asked people how much they spend on private education for the kids, and they found out that most of the households they spend almost the same amount of money on private education that they spend on food. Yeah. Oh. 
so like the, on, on an average the top earning mm-hmm. the top bracket 20% mm-hmm. they would spend around like uh, $800 $900 every month on private education and like even in the bottom bracket they would still spend around like $400 $500 a month and that's to me is crazy like that's almost the double amount of money that you need to pay one of the big reasons that they say why korea has one of the lowest birth rate is because they have the one of the highest expenditure on private education mm-hmm. in the world like do you know how much you paid on an average for your private education apart from high school I never asked my parents so I don't know the exact amount that I used but I would say around $400 because um after I came to college I also did tutoring and based on that experience I would say around $400 because I did to I had two personal train uh, tutoring every month how about you for me well because I was in art and it is really expensive to buy some ingredients things so the supplies yeah mm-hmm. in months i think we paid like a million won <gasps> like one in a month and not for me but if you want to take a some special lesson yeah. for uni test then it will pay like 6 million won in a month 6 million yeah. that doesn't that's make sense. that's Seriously? higher than the the tuition for university for one semester yeah, yeah one semester and that's one month that's one month 6 million in one month but in one month you should go to hagwon like 10 to 10 every day so you so, don't go to school yeah it, like it is, it is like after sunun we should prepare uh, some art oh, test so that kind of is for that period yeah, just, that period uh, uh, i thought it was like during your last no, year of high no, school no, no. every day, every day. <laughs> uh, that would be that's, very that's expensive fun. yeah so like for one two months yeah, you go to months. these But it's still, but still it's like two years of yeah. university institution exactly still so much too much money like but like does who people who go to these super expensive hug ones are do they all get into good universities no like even so in it's a gamble it's a gamble <laughs> yeah really high risk high mm. risk and gamble even in the special lesson maybe there will be 100 more than 100 students in one lesson so that's a lot of money between that make. kind of <laughs> students just uh, 10 or 20 students from really? university I think so 10 or 20 so 80 like more or less 80% yeah. of students they spend like 6 million won one month Even and they, they don't go uni but not, not the, the uni they want mm. not top uni things so that's a big gamble like i mean if you have the money i guess you can do it but for people from lower income backgrounds if yeah. they want to go to to that good university but they cannot cuz yeah. it is not their option they cannot place. afford it yeah so Usually you get private tutoring to like prepare for sunen, right? Uh no, the majority of the p- students usually go to hagwons because other than sunen they you also have to take care of your scores, mm. grades that you get in school because for there is an early admission in Korea also called sushi. Yeah. But if you have a good grade, you can apply for the early admission mm. and then take Sunung. So there's like this track that you have to go through. So but if you want to get a good grade in sushi, then you have to go to hagwons that are around your um where you live. Yeah. Because usually <clears throat> the hagwons around the place uh, around that school has the has the tests what they usually I didn't know what the yeah, yeah, high yeah. school usually, test would be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have the data oh. about that uh, about those exams. Yeah. So they make other make they make similar questions mm-hmm. to those exams for students. So most of the students even in my school, they had a hagwon that m- almost 70% of the schools go to. Uh students go to. Of the, of your school. Yeah. Oh. Because they give out worksheets or their own textbooks. Yeah. for those exams and it's just for school exams yeah, yeah. it's not even sooner yeah so you need to prepare for your school exams plus you need to yeah. prepare yeah. separately yeah. for sooner yeah. that's a lot of preparation yeah. <laughs> because even if you go apply for the early admission you have to take the sooner because there is a minimum grade that you have to get yeah. based on the three years of the grades that you get throughout the three years you apply for the early admission mm-hmm. so 
every semester you have a midterm and a, and a final term exam. So based on those grades plus the extracurricular curricular activities. So the reason why a lot of students try to go to special high schools after graduating middle school is because the minute that you get upset, uh, accepted to the special schools, they have a lot of extracurricular activities mm -hmm. made out for you. But then regular schools that I went to, if you want to make your applications look good, your resume look good, then you have to make your own extracurricular activities. So mm -hmm. one time my friend wanted to make this extracurricular activity for her um, application. So she went to her teacher to ask if it's okay for her to do these activities for her applications. The teacher said no. Why? Because they it's like an extra job they have to do. Uh, for, for the, the teachers? Yeah. Uh. So sometimes that's like the bad, the negative aspects of regular schools. Mm. Does everyone apply for early admissions? I think like most of the yeah. students apply for it. Mm. Because almost 90%, I think almost 90%, almost 90% right? Yeah, almost 90% of the students apply for it. And then they take suneng. Mm -hmm. So they apply they apply their resume and then their suneng. So the college um, checks if all the students got their minimum, yeah. minimum grades. There's like a cutoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's minimum. a cutoff. Mm -hmm. So they check that and then the students who didn't get the cutoff fails yeah. to enter that school. Mm. And then for students who got a higher score than the minimum grade, they get to see the interview. Mm -hmm. They get to get it. They have an opportunity to take the, the mm. interview. Some students in our high school just studying only for Suneng. Like mm. there is sushi, like earlier admission, but also for also Suneng. Some some kind of we can say this as Jongsi, mm -hmm. not for Sushi. Mm -hmm. Sushi is only admission and Jongsi is only for Sunung, like mm -hmm. not for high school grades, some kind of things, extracurricular, no things, just for Sunung that we call Jongsi. And that Jongsi is like starting for three years and get everything at one day. Like only uh, for that one Sunung day, they get started, finish. So like you can get admission in a university just based on your Sunung scores? Yeah, yeah. we also you can, can do, do that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What happens if you get in a university in early admission, but you get good scores, like really good scores in Suning, yeah. and you want to go to like to like a better university? Yeah. Can you do that? That's oh, not possible. Yeah. That's not possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it's a gamble. Yeah, really yeah, gamble. Talking about Suning, um, like for me, I've been living in Korea for a long time, so I know how Suning works and like how crazy it is. But can you explain how the Suning day looks like? Uh. Like how is a Suning day? Like is this one day, right? Just yeah, one day. Is. Suning day, like the whole country seems like we will encourage you guys, mm -hmm. the people who get Suning. So even at that day, the airplane cannot go off or go right, down right. till Suning end. Like <laughs> because, because of the sound. Yeah. The yeah. sound can interrupt students, so they will never stop it. And that's too crazy. Yeah. The whole country stops. Yeah, the whole country <laughs> stops. Whole country stops. Yeah. Whole country stops. Whole that's country stops. Right. For the students to yeah, yeah, have just peace. for the students, but like that has a reason, like why the whole country stops for the whole day because like the suning is for it's eight so hours. Yeah. It's like they're using all the twelve years education that they got in one day. Yeah, just for one. So day. that makes sense. Yeah, like no airplanes and even all the people who have to go to work, they delay the time to not interrupt the students to go to their school to get yeah, those yeah. get tasks so yeah. what what time does it start and like how 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 is like the sooning schedule i think it is like at 9 a.m maybe yeah it was 9 a.m 9 a.m the start, the test started and end up like it can be 3 p.m mm -hmm. or some 5 p.m because we can choose the foreign language things mm -hmm. to do tests or not so at first we get korean things and then mass and they get lunch time and then we get English test. And then we can choose science or some humanity things. It was like one hour. And then we can choose to get, ah, oh yeah, between there is Korean history mm -hmm. and then foreign language. Mm -hmm. This foreign language is like optional things. In India, we still get an option to not take math. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Like in high school, mm -hmm. If I briefly explain our high school system, like we have three streams that you can take. There's science, commerce, and arts. Arts is like humanities. Mm -hmm. So science kids, they take only science subjects, plus English, which is obligatory. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the commerce kids they take like accounting, economics, business studies, statistics, and all those subjects plus English because English is obligatory for everyone. Mm -hmm. And humanities they take like uh, psychology and uh, philosophy and stuff like that plus English. So depending on what courses you choose, you give only those exams. So English is the I think is is the only exam that everyone gives and the rest is optional you give your own uh, the subjects that you took and for us it's it can last almost a month like our sooner mm -hmm. it's not one day <laughs> it can almost last a month usually two weeks ish and we just give one exam in one day and one exam is three hours it's a long exam but we just have one exam in one day and between two exams, you c will get at least one day off, oh. so that you can get you can get rest, you can study, and you can revise, and you, then you can get the next exam. And sometimes, since it's like a national exam, and India is a big, big country, and a lot of kids are taking the exam, and what every subject will be will will have the exam on the same day nationally. So, like since we don't have a lot of common subjects that everyone takes, the schedule is is very wide it's, it's like uh, it's all over the month so depending on what subjects you take your date changes the date that you take the exam and sometimes like you can take exam you can take like four exams in the course of two weeks and like your last exam would be like two weeks after oh. <laughs> because like that's how the schedule is and every year the schedule changes oh. so you never know you don't know beforehand like the schedule comes out maybe like two months before oh. the exam so you don't know <laughs> You don't know how long your exams will be. You don't know what your schedule will be. But like it's since it's a big population, the schedule is very complicated. So for me, it is so crazy that you take five exams yeah. in one day. And it's not just five, right? You can you can have like six yeah. or seven exams. I think the basis is um, how many basis is like Korean math, English, yeah. and social studies, science, mm -hmm. and Korean history. That is the necessary things. Yeah. So you have six subjects. Yeah. And then plus foreign language. For, plus foreign. So seven yeah. subjects in one yeah. day. <laughs> how how do you like when you finish your sooning? How do you feel? Like is your brain just fried? It just turns out. Yeah. Like turn off. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Bye bye. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not working today. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like we will never work in again. <laughs> but, <laughs> but usually after Sunung, you have to prepare for interviews. Yeah. Ah. So if you get good grades in Sunung, you don't have time to rest. Yeah. So usually, uh, you know, there's like in March or September, there's like an important mock, mock exams okay. for Sunung. Yeah. Ah. So it's you. Yeah, it's like practicing, mm -hmm. practicing tests. We have similar in India too. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, every yeah. school does it like uh -huh. separately, uh -huh. but we have like pre-boards. Yeah, like yeah, our sunung is called yeah. a board exam. Mm -hmm. So we have pre-boards oh. like in like one month before, two months before. Yeah. So yeah, it's similar. So we have pre-board um, exams. And then after, if you think that you're going to get a good grade in, in sunung, then like a week before or two weeks before that, how ones start to get Apply, apply applications for students who want to get interviews. Yeah. Ah, so you go to a hug, another hug one to practice for the interview. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you just go to hug ones for everything. Yeah. <laughs> everything has ha hug ones. Mm, yeah. Because yeah. everything is standardized. Yeah. So yeah. there is a method that they can teach you. Mm -hmm. That's right. yeah, makes sense. So how was your sooning day? Like, do you remember? It's been a while, right? Yeah, it's been a while. It's it's been like six or seven years mm -hmm. from now. So something special happened on my Sunung day because um, the day before Sunung, there was a big earthquake in Pohang. Yeah. So I was studying at my house with my phone off and my mom and dad came in at like 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. and they were like, hey, your sunung is delayed for a week. I was oh, like, no, <laughs> no, that, that's not true. That cannot be true. Because after, if if I just take sunung, it's like free for me. Yeah, I, I have all the free time in one day, but it's like delaying that, delaying my freedom for a week. So yeah. I was like so sad. So. Do you think your sunung went well? Um. No, <laughs> because usually like Korean students watch YouTube a lot, but in YouTube, they're like 
things that you shouldn't do on your Sunung day. Uh. But I did a lot of things that I shouldn't do. <laughs> you think it's because of that? No, I I don't know. It, it might have been in my unconscious, but I don't know. I I don't I don't know why I did the things that at the things that we shouldn't do on Sunung day. Like what are the things like is it like superstitions that people have? Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. Like some are like um there are like songs that you shouldn't listen yeah. to at least from one before Sunung like for one month you shouldn't listen to certain songs because yeah, they so keep go lovely. through go through your memories uh, it's yeah. like, go through your brain some songs yeah. like are super junior is sorry sorry yeah. like sorry 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 that that keeps going through your brain uh, it's like a ring worm yeah, yeah. it becomes a ring worm something that i did was something that ha- happened in my english exam was uh-huh. uh, usually during the english exam the students have um a step where they start solving questions. Yeah. So usually they have a listening test first. Mm-hmm. But during the listening test they start um they solving, start solving the, the next, next part. Okay, part. Why? That is because the you can part. do that? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Because there's a limit of time. Mm-hmm. But the in that time you can't solve all the questions mm-hmm. because there are so many questions and the questions aren't that easy. Yeah. So you have to do it like that. But I've never done it like that because I've lived abroad and I was like, oh, my English is okay. <laughs> and I've never gotten a score under a hundred a hundred percent. So wow. I was like so I was like I was confident in English. So I was like, oh I'm not gonna do that. And then but then like the day before I never knew that skill before before that. But then day before Sunung my friends from Yaja told me that there was a skill like that. So I was like, wow, dang, you, you guys are so smart. And then I don't know why, but that Sunung day, I just suddenly did that. Uh, so like, uh, that was kind of a disaster. You were confused. Yeah. Mm. So, well, I got out of that easily, but still it was so confusing for me. <laughs> so don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> did you have like any personal like superstitions that for just for Sunung? Oh, well, just for Sunung, like, oh, yeah, I used some kind of, I don't know how to say this in English, but massage sleeper, there is things. Massage like, sleeper? In sleeper, it, it is normal sleeper. Ah, things, a slipper. Yes, yeah, sleeper a sleeper. shoes. Ah, a sleeper, okay. But there is some stone inside of the shoes. Ah, so, the acupuncture. Yeah, acupuncture things. Oh. So I used that sleeper because I'm really bad at get enduring sleeping. So oh. to stop, to just avoid that, it maybe can happen like I sleep in Sunung day, so uh-huh. I don't want it. So, so for you to not fall yeah. asleep, you have the stones in yeah. your slipper. So it's like torturing yourself yeah. <laughs> to stay awake. That's so, yeah. so I use the slipper. I use I I go to school by that just so <laughs> it was great things. Wait, did you go to school like even on regular days? Did you wear that acupuncture well, slipper? Well, not, not regular day, but when I'm studying, I use that slipper oh. to make it used to it. But not that much, because mm. for torturing. That's I've never heard anyone doing that. Me neither. Yeah. Like, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Have you heard of people having like weird stu- superstitions or like something weird that superstitions. like oh. they did before Sunning or on Sunning day? Oh, there are like some some funny superstitions are like we have to take our lunchbox ah, yeah. to school uh, to the Sunung day, but things were like. Don't eat miyoko. Yeah, that's right. Don't with like some seaweed uh, soup. Seaweed, seaweed. Uh, it's it's a soup made out of seaweed. Yeah. But because you're gonna slip. Because uh, it is too slippery to yeah, eat. It's so slippery we can slip to it. eat. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna slip on the grades. Yeah. So don't eat miyoko uh, or don't give miyoko as a yeah. lunch lunch. So now that we are on the Sunung topic, like as I mentioned in beginning of the podcast, that the government announced that they're going to remove the killer questions, yeah. uh, so that not everyone needs to go to the hug ones and spend all that money so like they're just harder questions yeah. that are harder to solve right when you go to hug ones they basically teach you how to solve mm-hmm. and strategize to find the answer to for these super hard questions so basically just removing the killer questions means that they're removing the techniques yeah. techniques yeah. that hug one teachers teachers they make money off yeah what do you think about that like, would you want? Would you have wanted them to take off the killer questions when you took Sunan? <laughs> what do you think? Well, for me, like, I will don't like it, but it is not because that the killer question makes some kind of change. Like, I'm, I think that removing killer question situation cannot change the, any situation. Like, mm. it it cannot be some fundamental solution about this. 
So I think that removing killer Christian situation cannot solve the fundamental problem of the Sunung. And also I think some students and some parents will go more and more hard on to get solution of these removing killer mm -hmm. Christian so situation. So I think that's really kind of dumb solution. But like, what do you think, you just mentioned that it won't solve any Sunung, like problems related to Sunung? What, what do you think, pro like Sunung, what problem does Sunung has? I think that the Sunung and some, the fundamental problem of this Korean educational system and Sunung system is some social atmosphere that we just really forced all of the students in high school, they were just 15 or 17 years old, but we forced them to do their everything for the one day test and do their everything to go to the top university. So if they, in, and even they say like, if you don't go to university right now, or in this year, if you don't go to university, then you will ruin your life, your failure. Mm -hmm. So that kind of social atmosphere is the most fundamental problem, I think so. Mm. So the killer questions is not going yeah, to yeah. That is change just, anything. I mean, the system is a problem. It's yeah. not the killer questions that are the problem. If I was in the last year of my high school, if I would be pretty mad yeah. about that. The reason why they have killer question is to like divide grades. Yeah. Then it would be way more competitive because mm -hmm. the exams would be, the exam grades would just to be divided by one point, yeah. by just one point or two points. So it, it doesn't make much of a difference. So it would yeah. just do a, it would have a counter effect than what the government yeah. is yeah. Exactly. wanting to have. Yeah. They think that it would make it easier for everyone to give the exam, but then that would just make it worse. Yeah. So everyone will just go to more hard ones yeah. to get at least that one point better. That, ah, I never thought about it like that. I only thought like, if they remove the killer questions, yeah, okay, then it's easy. It, the exam would get easier for people and they could at least have a life and they could like study a little bit less mm -hmm. and still get good grades and do like their hobbies and like spend time with their families or friends and just have a life, you know, outside of school. Yeah. But I never thought that how it would just affect it in the opposite way. It would just, um, I mean, it's not becoming easier just for me. Yeah. If if it's that, if it's if it's a matter of that, it would make sense. But it's it's becoming easier for everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's as she said, the fundamental problem is just the same. Yeah. It's just a system problem. So. Have you felt like this the whole um, mentality around education has changed over time in Korea? Like, or is it like still the same as like ten years ago? Getting more abnormal. <laughs> Getting more abnormal. Yeah, it's becoming more abnormal. More abnormal. Because the questions, the reason why killer questions came out is because there are more smart students every year, yeah. and yeah, every year they become they have new techniques. Mm -hmm. So if you see the Korean Korean um, texts, the texts that are in the question, yeah. it becomes more longer every year. Every, yeah, year. every year. So. The first year, uh, so last year it was like just half a page. The next year it's like two pages. Oh the next God. year it's like three pages. Yeah. So it's it's becoming abnormal by every minute. Mm. So like, is it even helping anyone learn things? Did you feel that, okay, what I'm learning is actually useful for my life? Or like, I actually, I'm enjoying learning about these things that I didn't know before? About Sunian curriculum, never. Mm. Like when I was in, because uh, I was in global high school, our first and second year was some can I can do some critical thinking about writing thesis, essay, presentation, that kind of things. Well, that part was really good for me. Like even in university or even about some just leaving, it is really good for me. But about student curriculum, our last year was never helpful. Like what I learned is just how to get good grade in Suning. That's all, and I know that. Every high school is really focused on just getting good grade in high, get getting good grade in Suning. So it can be never helpful after Suning. I think it kind of differs among subjects. Mm -hmm. So like uh, subjects that I liked, like I like math. I liked math or like some foreign languages. Mm -hmm. I liked learning Chinese and stuff. But the reason why I liked math, the fundamental reason was because I get to think a lot. But in Korean or English, it was all memorizing. Yeah. Especially- It should be the opposite, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. The reason why I really hated the Korean subject is because 
they have they have an answer. Yeah. If you go at a little bit out of the answer, then you're, you're just wrong. wrong. Even once there was a Korean author and he came out in the news and said that I've never wrote those texts in those purposes. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. He, he even said like, uh, at this part, I just wrote because there it is. But yeah. in test, we should think like, yeah, he was happy or yeah, he was he, so sad. He wrote this because of this yeah. and that, this and that. Kind of big purpose, but he just said, I just wrote it. <laughs> it's That's just all. nonsense. <laughs> yeah. So this is making up things yeah. just to see who memorizes the best. Yeah. yeah. And who knows the uh, mind of the, the author, people who get make the test? Who make the test? Not the owner. Not, not the, owner. the author. The people not who are the making author. the test. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of Korean authors say that they don't want their text in the yeah. Korean test. Like it, it makes sense why everyone is so angry and like why they're so concerned yeah. when the government announced that they'll yeah. remove the killer question because like the whole system is kind of collapsed yeah. now. Yeah. I guess your experiences that we heard today, they made us understand why mm -hmm. people are reacting that way. Because it's hard for a foreigner to understand why are they reacting that way? Yeah. Because it's just make, going to make it easier. Yeah. But then as you said, it just makes it more competitive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you for sharing uh, all these experiences that you have had and like explaining us how the Korean system works. And do you have like any last comments or like something that you want to share about your high school life? This Korean education system is really abnormal, but I just hope people do not think it is fault of students. Yeah, like right. the students is kind of victim of this system, not their offenders. So yeah, poor students. <laughs> <laughs> but. There, there are some fun things that students can enjoy yeah. in their high school life. So I just hope that those students just won't get past that because that's the only one chance in your lifetime to enjoy. When you're 18. Yeah. 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 So it never comes back. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys all enjoy yeah. high school lifetime. Thank you so much for coming to this podcast and, and enlightening us with the Korean education <laughs> system. And yeah, see you guys on the next podcast. Thank Say you. bye. Bye. <laughs>